Welcome back to another video on the channel. Unfortunately, I'm not bringing any good news regarding um, the schedule of play and, you know, the schedule for tennis for the rest of 2020. Uh, reacting to the news that Wimbledon 2020 is officially being cancelled today. Um, I think pretty much all of us knew that it was going to be cancelled. Um, unfortunately, the coronavirus uh, positive tests and deaths have uh, massively increased in the UK uh, within the last couple of days. Um, with Wimbledon attracting, you know, audiences of a million plus um, across the two weeks, it's it was very difficult to see the tournament um, going ahead. Uh, when you consider there's coaches, spectators, players, journalists, um, all the tournament directors, uh, everything like that, having to travel from different parts of the world, and as I say, all the spectators who are hoping to um, enjoy two weeks of tennis live. Um, it was very unlikely for the tournament to go ahead, but today it was officially confirmed that Wimbledon has been cancelled. Um, they did apparently debate, um, postpone the tournament, but it wasn't it wasn't ever possible. Um, when you consider the schedule is already going to be pretty stacked uh, towards the back end of the year if we do get any tennis. Um, playing behind closed doors was also uh, not really considered. Uh, I don't think Wimbledon would ever be the same behind closed doors. You know the history and the tradition of. Um, the support on all the courts is uh, something that makes them than what it is really and I think it would be a massive um, disappointing, disappointing tournament really if it wasn't um, for the spectators um, that history so I think to cancel a tournament is best for all parties um, obviously it is a massive shame um, for all of us tennis fans probably our best two weeks of the year uh, of sport but there's nothing we can do about it, you know, it's the right decision, um, as much as we might um, miss Wimbledon this year, it is ultimately the right decision, you know, people's health has to come first, it is paramount in all these situations for the spectators and the players, etc, um, and we're back next year, um, and I'm sure it'll come back bigger than better, bigger and better, sorry, and um, we'll be back to having fantastic uh, grass court tennis. Uh, I think the both ATP and WTA announced today that there will be no tennis until July the 13th um, at the earliest, so that's all the um, grass court tournaments pretty much wiped out, Queens, Wimbledon, Birmingham, Manchester, so I think the grass court season now is over uh, for 2020 before it's even started. Uh, obviously we've got the French Open got rescheduled to late, December, late September to early October, Obviously, that clashes with the Labour Cup, and it's only within a week of the US Open. So whether that goes ahead, um, I'm not so sure. And to be honest, it's getting to a point now where we'll see tennis at all this year. Obviously, America's uh, been hit hard by the coronavirus. France is continuing um, to be hit hard as well. And you just wonder whether um, the tennis federations will make a move to just cancel the, um, tennis completely in 2020. Um, ahead from that, I'm just gonna have a look at you know a few players which which players be most badly affected, um, by this coronavirus outbreak and the the wipeout of every 2020 tournament barring the Australian Open. Uh, so I think if you start at the top, Djokovic, um, you know he was in the form of his life, wasn't he? Really, you know he started this year so well. He's he's obviously still unbeaten. Uh, feels like ages ago since the Australian Open. Well, it is. It is two months ago now, uh, but I think Djokovic was confident and he was going for that um, four Grand Slam titles this year. You know, the French Open was always going to be a difficult one with Rafa in the form he's in, uh, but Wimbledon in the US, I think Djokovic was certainly um, the massive favourite for, although in previous years he has shown to almost be burnt out by the time the US Open comes about. Um, if the US Open was to go ahead, uh, perhaps Djokovic... Uh, would have a better chance of winning the US than usual. Um, obviously, he puts a hell of a lot of work into winning Wimbledon. He's a five-time champion there now. Um, he almost he always works uh, extremely hard and practices so much on grass, um, and it works for him. You know, he's won Wimbledon titles, I say, five times now. But by the time we get into the US Open, he's already played three Grand Slams. He usually, getting to the to the deep ends of every tournament that he plays in. Um, so perhaps having no Wimbledon. Um, and going that US US Open completely fresh and with pressure on his back um, to close the gap in the top two uh, might give him a better chance of actually winning the US Open this year if there's you know for Djokovic I think 
he is the man behind. Um, you know, he's only on 17 grand slams. I see only uh, it's an unbelievable amount, but the other two are on 19 and 20. Uh, Djokovic, Nadal, and Federer, they aren't getting any younger. You know, a year without any tennis is still you're still a year older in your body. Um, but for Djokovic, you know, he has won the only grand slam that's been played this year. Um, and as I say, for the US Open, the conditions do um, heavily suit Djokovic, but um, he's usually burnt out. Uh, by that tournament, you know he's only won it uh, three times, which is still a great amount. But when you consider he's won the the strain eight times and on, a, on the same surface, it does show you that he struggles at the back end of the years. Um, so for Djokovic, you know, in his quest to win the US Open for a fourth time, it, it could be a positive um, in terms of Grand Slam race. Uh, it's not a positive at all when you when you know Wimbledon isn't going to happen this year. But at least he got the strain opening um, and got a title under his belt. Uh, for Rafa, I think it largely depends on if Roland Garros goes ahead, doesn't it, really? I mean, some of the stuff I've seen about Roland Garros is quite crazy. I mean, they're considering to play on a different surface, um, which I'm not sure even would, would be within the rules. Um, and it's massively debated and unlikely, from my opinion, whether Taunton even goes ahead. You know, it's clashing with the Labour Cup now, uh, the new date, and it seems as if they're just... You know, the tournament that is at Roland Garros where we're looking to cancel the tournaments, they've just postponed it to later later on in the year and hope that it will go um, ahead in that in that time. But if the US Open was to go ahead uh, at their normal time in September, surely the French Open can't start just a week later. You know, you've, players need a rest after two week long tournaments. Uh, they need a break. Uh, there's obviously that switching surfaces usually, uh, well, there would be between the hard court and the clay. I'm sure that wouldn't Tom wouldn't go ahead at them at them dates at the moment, um. But hopefully it does. Hopefully we do get a French Open. You know, as much tennis as we can fit in, the better. Um, I think it's very unlikely to see any tennis at all, uh, especially Grand Slam tennis when it lasts two weeks and attracts uh, millions of spectators. Uh, but I'd love to even get one more Grand Slam in, uh, whether that be the French or the US Open. You know, it doesn't really matter. If you just want to see um high quality tennis and. Um, some positive sport at the back end of the year after the torrid start, torrid start we've had. Um, but yeah, for Rafa, uh, it just depends on the Roland Garros, doesn't it? Really, uh, he's, he's almost guaranteed that title every year, um, and he'd want that one to level up with Federer. Um, obviously, the US Open is defending champion, so Rafa could technically have a fantastic end of the year. You know, if he could defend the US Open title, uh, defend his French Open title, and then come out of uh, 2020 gaining a, a one slam advantage on Djokovic and a two slam advantage on Federer which I'm sure he'd be very happy with uh, as for Federer um, you know he's what is he 39 now it's it's another year um, closer to retirement almost for Roger you know he, he did play fantastic uh, Australian Open although he wasn't at his best he still found a way to reach the semi-final um, he obviously reached the Wimbledon final last year so surely he is still in good enough form. He is still, um, you know, at his peak, uh, capable of beating anybody in the world. Capable of mixing it even with Djokovic. You know, he should have won that one with the final last year. Uh, he had a great position. He was in a great position um, throughout that one. And for Federer, you know, Wimbledon's always his best chance of feeling now of winning Grand Slams. Uh, it's it's a difficult surface to play on. It's it's a surface that he's mastered over the years. He's really at home at Wimbledon. Um, he's the favourite with the crowd in every match he plays. But when you're going into the Australian Open, the US Open now, and you've got um, hardcore players like you, uh, you know, even the Shikori's fantastic on the hardcore tees coming back. Uh, Stan's obviously got a great hardcore record. Djokovic, uh, Nadal's adapting and improving all the time. Dominic Team showed at the Australian Open how, how much he's improved his uh, hardcore play in the past 18 months. Andy Murray will be returning next year, which makes it even harder. And then you've got the next gen, you know, Zverev, uh, Medvedev, Sitsipas, they're all improving and they're so good, so quick on these um, on these hard courts. And for Federer, I, see if, I think it's very difficult to see Federer ever winning a hard court slam again. Um, for Wimbledon, though, as I say, I think young players um, struggle to adapt to play on grass. You know, Sasha Zverev is one of those. He's, he's always done pretty well in hard court on grass he's, he's struggled uh, Medvedev hasn't had a run at Wimbledon yet or sits a pass and I think um, if you can master how to play on, on grass like Roger has and Novak has uh, it makes him very very difficult to beat on a on a difficult surface 
uh, so for Roger not to get a chance to win Wimbledon this year uh, just to really knock his chances of finishing with the most grand slams um, and you know will we ever see Federer at Wimbledon again you know this could have been his final year you know he's not going to go on forever he is 39 now um, he's obviously got a heavily uh, reduced schedule and this could have been his final year at Wimbledon uh, perhaps obviously he's got to take into account he hasn't played much tennis this year so he hasn't got any more miles on the clock uh, so I do expect to see him back next year as I do for Serena as well uh, but I do think Federer uh, will suffer obviously in the slam race not having a Wimbledon title uh, you consider Djokovic has already won the Australian um, Nadal might get a shot of winning the French again then Djokovic and Nadal go to that uh, US Open if if that was to go ahead um, as a favourite again uh, so yeah not a great year uh, for Federer um, you know for the next gen it's, it's obviously disappointing for them as well it's disappointing for everybody you know everybody wants to be in these tournaments uh, that's what these professional players were uh, live for and train for and prepare for all year round you know to, to play them top four tournaments uh, obviously the prize money comes into account the ranking points uh, but just even to, to mix it with the best and play in front of crowds on the biggest stages the biggest arenas uh, that's, that's what they've jumped for as kids um, so to go full year without that I'm sure is um, massively disappointing for them but you've got to take into account uh, why it's happening and I think every player, uh, no no player in the world, no spectator in the world will, will disagree um, with the decisions that have been made. I think the tournaments have to get cancelled, you know, the, uh, with what's going on at the moment. But I just thought I would sum up um, the effect that it's going to have on, the, on that Grand Slam race. Uh, in terms of the women's matches, it's just, you know, there's no one really um, out doing each other in the women's section, on the women's um side really you know everyone's beating each other and we were just going to to have four fantastic um such high quality grand slams this year obviously we got this strain open luckily um a fantastic tournament again with Sophia Kennan coming out on top of that one but I was so looking forward to seeing how this year unfolded because you're waiting for somebody to really stamp their authority uh, on the women's game obviously Serena's lost the last few, few finals um I thought Hallett might have you know really dominated the women's game but she hasn't really gone on then when I sacked one back to back Grand Slams, I thought, you know, is this the one to win four, five, six, and then even at the end of her career win double figures? She could still do that. Uh, but you do have to say, since the last Grand Slam win, she has slot, sort of not fell off the radar, but not looked um, in that imperious form that she was. You know, she got outgunned by uh, Coco Goff, obviously, at the US Open, um, which came completely out of the blue. Um, Australian Open she'd never great tournament either uh, so it's wide open the women's draw really is wide wide open um, Galbina Mugruth is firing back into form now Andrescu obviously suffered a, a knee injury after winning that US Open which uh, sort of halted her assault in the women's game but I was looking forward to a fantastic 2020 uh, for women's tennis unfortunately we won't get that um, though it looks very unlikely anyway but 2021 hopefully um, that I'll be back fit and fighting and uh, raring to give us some more fantastic uh, epic matches uh, so many that we've seen in the past uh, as for the channel I'm still going to try and bring out as many videos as possible uh, I have got an interview with Katie Dunn coming out uh, who's a young British uh, star rising the rankings in singles and doubles uh, that's coming out in the blog later this week um, so if you want to check that out, check that out I will leave a link uh, in the description also to the Twitter account uh, and blog will get posted uh, but yeah thanks for watching again and I'll be back probably sometime over the weekend with another video so thanks again uh, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video